CIET NCERT presents audiobook of geography for class 7 entitled Our Environment. This is the chapter 7 Human Environment, Settlement, Transport and Communication from page 47 to page 54. Page 47 in Chapter 1, you have learned that early human beings depended entirely on nature for food, clothing and shelter. But with time, they learned new skills to grow food, build homes and develop better means of transport and communication. In this way, they modified the environment where they lived. Settlements are places where people build their homes. Early human beings lived on trees and in caves. When they started to grow crops, it became necessary to have a permanent home. The settlements grew near the river valleys as water was available and land was fertile. With the development of trade, commerce and manufacturing, human settlements became larger. Settlement flourished and civilizations developed near river valleys. Do you recall the names of civilization that grew along the banks of rivers Indus, Tigris, Nile and Huanghe? Settlements can be permanent or temporary. Settlements which are occupied for a short time are called Temporary settlements. The people living in deep forests, hot and cold deserts and mountains often dwell in such temporary settlements. They practice hunting, gathering, shifting cultivation and transhumans. However, more and more settlements today are permanent settlements. In these settlements, people build homes to live in. On the bottom right of the page, we have the picture of human settlement. And also, on the top right corner of the page, we have a question for you. Do you know? The place where a building or a settlement develops is called its site. The natural conditions for selection of an ideal site are 1. Favorable climate 2. Availability of water, 3. Suitable land, 4. Fertile soil. Page 48. On the top left of the page, we have a section called Glossary. The word is transhumans. It is a seasonal movement of people. People who rear animals move in search of new pastures according to changes in seasons. It was Mary's birthday party. She and her friends were waiting for Gurpreet to arrive so that Mary could cut the cake. At last, Gurpreet arrived, tired, coughing and wheezing. She explained that the traffic jam was terrible. Mary's mother, Mrs. Thomas, patted Gurpreet's back and sighed, Oof! The pollution in our city! Prasad had recently come from his village. He asked, Why do we have such traffic jams and such pollution in the cities? The number of vehicles is increasing day by day due to the growing population in the cities. Mary's father, Mr. Thomas, replied, Mary asked, Then why are people coming to the cities? Her mother replied, They come looking for jobs, better education and medical facilities. Mary further inquired, If so many people keep coming to cities, where will all the people live? Mr. Thomas said, that is why you see so many slums and squatter settlements where people stay in congested and unhygienic conditions. 
Shortage of power and water supply are common problems in the cities, Prasad said. Our villages may not have big cinema halls, well-equipped schools and good hospitals, but we have lot of open spaces and fresh air to breathe in. When my grandfather was sick, we had to rush him to the city hospital. From the above conversation, we can identify two different pictures of settlements, the rural and the urban settlements. The villages are rural settlement, where people are engaged in activities like agriculture, fishing, forestry, crafts work and trading etc. Rural settlements can be compact or scattered. A compact settlement is a closely built area of dwellings, wherever flat land is available. In a scattered settlement, dwellings are spaced over an extensive area. This type of settlement is mostly found in hilly tracts, thick forests and regions of extreme climate. On the left side of the page towards the bottom we have two pictures. One shows compact settlement and the other one scattered settlement. In rural areas, people build houses to suit their environment. In regions of heavy rainfall, they have slanting roofs. Page 49 Places where water accumulates in the rainy season, the houses are constructed on a raised platform or stilts. On the top right corner of the page, there is a picture of houses on stilts. Thick mud-walled houses with thatched roofs are very common in areas of hot climate. Local materials like stones, mud, clay, straw, etc. are used to construct houses. The towns are small and the cities are larger urban settlements. In urban areas, the people are engaged in manufacturing, trading and services. Name some of the villages, towns and cities of your state. On the right side of the page we have a picture which is titled where do you find dwellings made of ice? Who makes them and what are they called? And in the picture there is a person standing next to his dwelling made of ice. Transport Transport is the means by which people and goods move. In the early days it took a great deal of time to travel long distances. People had to walk, and used animals to carry their goods. Invention of the wheel made transport easier. With the passage of time, different means of transport developed, but even today people use animals for transport. On the page we have the picture of a horse cart as a mode of transportation. We see many people sitting on the cart. In our country, donkeys, mules, bullocks and camels are common. In the Andes mountains of South America, llamas are used, as are yaks in Tibet. The early traders from other countries used to take several months to reach India. They took either the sea route or the land route. Aeroplanes have made travel faster. Now it takes only six to eight hours to travel from India to Europe. Modern means of transport thus saves time and energy. On the bottom right side of the page, there is an activity titled, Let's Do. List the different modes of transport used by the students of your class while coming to school. Page 50. Do you know? There are several national and state highways in India. The latest development in India is the construction of expressways. 
the golden quadrilateral connects Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata. The four major means of transport are roadways, railways, waterways and airways. Roadways The most commonly used means of transport, especially for short distances, are roads. They can be metalled, that is, pakka, and unmetalled, that is, kacha. We have the pictures of both these kinds of roads on the page below. The metalled road and the unmetalled road. The plains have a dense network of roads. The roads have also been built in terrains like deserts, forests and even high mountains. Manali Leh Highway in the Himalayan mountains is one of the highest roadways in the world. Roads built underground are called subways or underpaths. Flyovers are built over raised structures. Railways The railways carry heavy goods and people over long distances quickly and cheaply. The invention of the steam engine and the industrial revolution helped in speedy development of rail transport. Diesel and electric engines have largely replaced the steam engines. In places, super-fast trains have been introduced to make the journey faster. The railway network is well developed over the plain areas. Advanced technological skills have enabled laying of railway lines in difficult mountain terrains also. But these are much fewer in number. Indian railway network is well developed. It is the largest in Asia. Do you know? The train from Jining to Lhasa runs at an altitude of 4,000 meters above sea level and the highest point is 5,072 meters. On the bottom left of the page, we have the picture of this train running at its full speed. Page 51 Do you know? The Trans-Siberian Railway is the longest railway system connecting St. Petersburg in western Russia to Vladivostok on the Pacific coast. Below this we have the picture of Trans-Siberian Railway displayed on the map of Russia. Waterways You have already learned that since early days, waterways were used for transportation. Waterways are the cheapest for carrying heavy and bulky goods over long distances. They are mainly of two types, inland waterways and sea routes. Navigable rivers and lakes are used as inland waterways. Some of the important inland waterways are the Ganga Brahmaputra River system, the Great Lakes in North America, and the river Nile in Africa. Sea routes and oceanic routes are mostly used for transporting merchandise and goods from one country to another. These routes are connected with the ports. Some of the important ports of the world are Singapore and Mumbai in Asia, New York, Los Angeles in North America, Rio de Janeiro in South America, Durban and Cape Town in Africa, Sydney in Australia, London and Rotterdam in Europe. A picture on the bottom right of the page shows inland waterways. Can you name some more ports of the world? Page 52 Airways this is the fastest way of transport developed in the early 20th century. It is also the most expensive due to high cost of fuels. Air traffic is adversely affected by bad weather like fog and storms. 
It is the only mode of transport to reach the most remote and distant areas, especially where there are no roads and railways. Helicopters are extremely useful in most inaccessible areas and in times of calamities for rescuing people and distributing food, water, clothes and medicines. On the left side of the page we have a picture of a helicopter. Some of the important airports are Delhi, Mumbai, New York, London, Paris, Frankfurt and Cairo. Communication Communication is the process of conveying messages to others. With the development of technology, humans have devised new and fast modes of communication. There is a picture on the bottom of the page which shows progress in the means of communication. We have come a long way from pigeons, postcards, newspapers, etc. to this age of telephones, computers, televisions, etc. The picture explains the evolution of the communication system. The advancement in the field of communication has brought about an information revolution in the world. Different modes of communication are used to provide information, to educate, as well as to entertain. Through newspapers, radio and television, we can communicate with a large number of people. They are therefore called mass media. The satellites have made communication even faster. Satellites have helped in oil exploration, survey of forest, underground water, mineral wealth, weather forecast and disaster warning. Now we can send electronic mails or emails through internet. Wireless telephonic communications through cellular phones have become very popular today. Internet not only provides us with worldwide information and interaction, but has also made our lives more comfortable. Now we can reserve tickets for railways, airways and even cinemas and hotels sitting at home. Let's do. Find out the names of some newspapers and TV news channels in English, Hindi and a regional language. With this kind of interconnectivity of people, services and institutions across the world, we are a large global society. Page 53 The page shows the world map and on it we can clearly notice major seaports and airports. They are all marked as dots and connected appropriately. Observe the entire network that connects the world. Page 54 Exercises 1. Answer the following questions. Part 1. What are the four means of transport? Part 2. What do you understand by the term settlement? Part 3. Which are the activities practiced by the rural people? Part 4. Mention any two merits of railways. Part 5. What do you understand by communication? Part 6. What is mass media? 2. Tick the correct answer. Part 1. Which is not a means of communication? A. Telephone B. Books C. Table Part 2. Which type of road is constructed under the ground? A. Flyover B. Expressways C. Subways Part 3. Which mode of transport is most suitable to reach an island? A. Ship B. Train C. Car Part 4. 
which vehicle does not pollute the environment? A. Cycle B. Bus C. Aeroplane 3. Match the following 1. Internet 2. Canal route 3. Urban areas 4. Compact settlement Your options are A. Areas where people are engaged in manufacturing, trade and services B. Closely built area of houses C. Houses on stilts D. Inland waterway E. A means of communication 4. Give reasons 1. Today's world is shrinking 5. For fun. Part 1. Conduct a survey in your locality and find out how many people commute to their respective workplaces using A. More than two modes of transport B. More than three modes of transport C. Stay within walking distance Part 2. Mention which mode of communication you will prefer most in the following situations. A. Your grandfather has suddenly fallen ill. How will you inform the doctor? B. Your mother wants to sell the old house. How will she spread this news? C. You are going to attend the marriage of your cousin for which you will be absent from the school for the next two days. How will you inform the teacher? D. Your friend has moved out with his or her family to New York. How will you keep in touch on a daily basis? The Chapter 7 of Total 9 Chapters of the Book Ends Here Narrator Gaurav Marva Production Assistant Shanu Muksim Producer Vimalesh Chaudhary Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India